Hi Capricorn, welcome to November 2020. This is the horoscope part of your overall reading. So Capricorn, we have a couple of direct motions this month that are favorable. Mercury goes direct in Libra on the 3rd, meaning that there could be on that day some conflict, some confusion surrounding career matters that will subside as Mercury moves out of shadow and moves into your 11th house, giving you the power to be influential to large groups of people and to speak to those that you need to communicate about shared causes and even wish fulfillment. That's leading us up to a Jupiter-Pluto conjunction, the third and final meeting of these two this year in the sign Capricorn. So for you, this is in your first house. This is very important, very powerful, and it has an ability with it to finally see how you want to transform and move forward in the world and what you could really do to make your life and yourself better. The next day, Mars goes direct in your fourth house, which is finally pulling you out of some tricky family affairs or past energy that you needed to deal with. And then two days after that, we have a new moon in Scorpio, which is sextiling Jupiter, Saturn, and Pluto in your sign. And this is your 11th house, Capricorn. So this is full of wish fulfillment and magic. Make sure to set your intentions that night. Venus will enter Scorpio, adding to the wish fulfillment energy and matters of love and money on the 21st. And then the sun enters Sagittarius, which will take you into a very thoughtful, very healing, and very introspective energy. And Neptune will also go direct in your third house, which means that communication might finally start to feel a little bit more steady. All in all, it's quite a positive month. On the last day of the month, we do have a lunar eclipse in Gemini, and Gemini is your work sector and your day-to-day, -day, so we can expect some changes going forward in December Capricorn in your work life and daily routine. Not to worry, there doesn't seem to be much aspecting this eclipse, and I think it's quite favorable for you. So let's see what the cards have to say, Capricorn, and I'll talk to you soon. Hi Capricorn, welcome to your November tarot portion of your overall reading. It is a favourable month in many ways. We have a more direct motion going forward, setting us up for your season. Jupiter, Saturn and Pluto are all direct in your sign and Jupiter and Pluto come together for the third time this year to meet in your sign and give you that final gift, that final change. To have Jupiter in your corner all year is an energy that is like putting a magnifying glass to something. So in many ways where Jupiter is, it can expand just about anything. It's really what you choose to view as expansive. You know, what are you seeing as something that could grow do you feel like things could just get worse or do you feel like things could just get better where are your spirals at the moment are you spiraling in a favorable direction or are you spiraling downwards that's actually a choice at the moment because that new moon in scorpio that's coming up is a wonderful time of intention setting and glory getting and being powerful the new moon in scorpio is of course in your 11th house of wishes and it's sextiling saturn in your sign pluto in your sign and jupiter in your sign and it's saying yes you can spiral upwards at this point the jupiter pluto conjunction on the 12th is also in your corner saying that you are enough and that you can do anything provided with temperance that you're ready to do a bit of healing alongside it that you're willing to make the moves to be the source of strong ambition but also to be someone that wants to be present for their family be present for their lover be present for themselves eight of pentacles while you're working on the things that you want to work on you still need to be there to have love and to be love and to give love and to receive love and to be present and to heal from anything that has been holding you back because with a fortune your luck is on the up seven of swords 
two of wands, the high priestess, the knight of swords, and the tower. Uh-huh. And you're probably thinking now, but my luck is on the up. Yeah. Which is why certain things need to change. Certain things can't come along on this upswing. Three of cups. Certain people can't celebrate with you anymore as you make yourself proud and make the people that matter proud and connect with your higher self, your creative self, your passionate self and your go-getting self. A lot of people that are using you or lying to you won't be coming along for the next couple of months of the year. Even if they feel like they've been around for a very long time. Your tolerance going forward as you see how much that you can do and achieve. Your tolerance for people that are like this, that are Seven of Swords energy is non-existent. With the High Priestess in your positive position, Capricorn, your intuition is strong, especially as we move into Sagittarius season. And while being aware that making good choices and seeing ahead and understanding motives seems like a good thing, it doesn't always feel so nice. Even some, some things that you see coming, they don't feel so nice. And for a lot of you, that Seven of Swords and the Knight of Swords in the challenge is somebody whose actions and reactions are too abrupt and too quick and too dismissive and too calculated for you to reason with. The Knight of Swords is somebody who's power hungry, but not in a way that is... Not in a way that is at all healthy. Not in a way that is based on a healthy ego. It's not based on the same ego you have where you want to achieve things. You know you can achieve things. You see the pathway to achieving them and you make them happen. And you're very wise. You're great counsel. That 11-3 vibration that you're having with the Scorpio energy is about great discussions. It's about great conversations. It's about making great friends, benefiting from your friends. But that full moon in Uranus, that conjunction between the moon and Uranus in your fifth house could really pull at your heartstrings either way. It could feel beautiful. It could feel full of love. It could feel full of joy and creativity, but it could also bring about some disappointments in people that you really felt had your heart. And so we have the tower moment here where you have to decide who's coming forward for the success that's coming in because there's a lot. And you don't want people to come forward that are not part of your higher vision. Three of Cups, the Emperor and the Queen of Wands. The Three of Cups and the Emperor is that energy of making your father proud, making your boss proud, making your superiors proud, making your, your higher self proud, being confident, having reason to celebrate. The Three of Cups after the Tower is a celebration of what is changing. And with the Wheel of Fortune underneath Capricorn and the Six of Wands under that, and the hermit, it's saying that sometimes the path to success can feel quite lonely. And while on one hand, we're saying balance it out, make sure that you're keeping your relationships while you're busy, while you're going for great things, make sure that you are keeping the people you love with you. It's also saying that as busy as you get, because your focus is very clear going forward, you have to make sure you're not so distracted that you're missing somebody taking things from underneath your feet. That's just a caution because, as I say, you're on to big success. But the power-hungry people, the greedy people, the ones who have self... They have their self-interests 
far above yours. And I think for a lot of you, it's in business. I think for a lot of you, it's in work. And you're feeling really tired of this kind of person or this person appearing in the same form over and over and over in different bodies. And what the cards are saying is that you've learned a lot with Saturn in your sign. You've learned a lot about yourself and it's about to move. And this time it really moves. This time it moves out of your sign for a very long time. And while Saturn loves being in your sign, don't get me wrong, you've had to learn a lot. And not all of that has been easy. But the Emperor up there, as Mars goes direct in your fourth house of family and the past, you can finally let something that is a bit of a dead weight go. Be it an energy, be it a person, be it a connection, be it a philosophy, be it a way of living, be it a schedule. Let's draw some oracle cards. Financial constraints. Some of you are quite worried about money or just feeling the pinch. That will change. Aha. <laughs> That'll really change. Okay. Cornucopia, woman holding a coin and the healer of ages. As we move towards a very healing time for humanity with the Aquarian energy, the Aquarian energy, Capricorn affects your money. It affects your worth and it affects your ability to invest and to indulge and to have the things that you want to have and to see the fruits of your labor finally come to fruition. The healer of ages. The healing time of Aquarius energy. And underneath we have the community card, meaning that you will be going forward celebrating with real friends. Scorpio season is funny like that. It shows you exactly who your real friends are. With Mercury retrograde in Scorpio Capricorn, you've maybe been finding out that some people were not who you thought they were. And they were deceitful or they were jealous or they were lying or they were manipulative or whatever that is. Or... As it retrogrades through Libra, you may have found out in business some people were trying to restrict you. Some people were trying to take the rug from under your feet. Some people were trying to manipulate your talents and your abilities for their own gain with little profit for you. You're seeing it all and you will use that in your favour. You will see it exactly as it needs to be. And you will use that High Priestess energy with... Neptune now direct in Pisces in November, you will use that energy to communicate and set boundaries and express what you need and what you deserve and you will find your independence. Your independence is a foundation for your strength and success. Foundations, the tower. You're setting up new foundations where yes, you'll celebrate with people. Yes, you'll make people very proud. But you're standing on your own too at the end of the day. And with the High Priestess, that independence, that detachment to look at things for how they are, that ability to trust your own judgment is what is leading you towards that success. It's letting you navigate that success that's coming up. Rhiannon, Sorceress, you're a magical person who can manifest your clear intentions into reality. I like it. I like it a lot. In the extended, we're going to get into what this, ex the, this success actually is. And we're going to get into the Virgo here. Because, ooh, Ten of Swords, Ten of Cups. You're coming out of some interesting career karma. You're coming out of a time period where you've really had to think on your feet. And that's not quite over yet, but... By the end of November, you know where you stand and you know what you're building and you have everything you need to go in that direction. You really have a strong hand of pride in your future. 
where people can't believe what you've built people can't believe how you've navigated a challenge and they can't believe it because you never had it in you they can't believe it because they couldn't do it that's the difference with the emperor and the queen of wands you get this beautiful balance of boss and fun of go-getter but of lover of achiever of parent but you're not building on false foundations anymore you're not building on anybody else's expectations of you you're not building on anybody else telling you what you want to hear you're not building on anybody else leading you down a garden path you're not building on anybody else making out that they know what they're doing when you know that they are not. You're building something real. That emperor energy is real. There's no messing about with him. And he can turn very cold if he's not having the joy in his life. So make sure that you're enjoying that as well. As we head into Sagittarius season, it's a very healing time for you. And with that sixth house eclipse Capricorn, there are big changes in terms of work. Let everything settle first. Let things reveal themselves. Trust your intuition. Go with that. Go with your intuition rather than your schedule. Go with your gut rather than the patriarchal standard. Okay, let's get into your extended and see what we have there, Capricorn. Bye.